Um, let's just begin with the Little Village community. Can you describe this community that you're all working in here? Sure. Little Village is a community mostly comprised of um, more recent Mexican immigrants. Um, it's a community of working class families um, who work very hard every day to support their families. And it's a community that's infused with culture and opportunities for kids and families to um, continue to develop their English and Spanish uh, language and share and participate um, in creating and sustaining cultural culture here in Little Village. So, you know, we entitled this, this webinar um, Broadening Parental Engagement. And we did that on purpose as some prior conversations we've had have been really inspiring and your perspective on what parental engagement is. Can you think of sort of what's the narrow perspective that people normally give to parental engagement and why might that not fit the model that we have here at Coco Chicago? Mm -hmm. um, I think schools for a long time have thought about parental engagement um, only looking through the lens of, of that they are here to support their child, doing their homework, uh, getting to school on time, uh, making sure they have a place at home to do their homework, um, participating in uh, PTA kind of events, um, sometimes fundraising, um, sharing food, and although those are important ways for parents to participate, um, certainly they seem like a very limited or narrow view. Um, and what we have tried to create are a multitude of opportunities for parents and community members to participate in the active life of the school um, based on the needs that are identified by parents and community mem members, and then trying to find different ways to accomplish and to meet those needs. So, and do you feel as though ultimately this, you, we engage parents and community, I imagine for you as a principal, to really help enrich the educational experience of the students you have here. How do students really benefit from having this program, TSEP, right here at Topa Chicago? So I, I think that that's absolutely true anytime we know your parents or your, the school is seen as a place where parents feel welcome and are coming for a variety of reasons, including uh, taking English as a second language classes, literacy classes, GED classes, participating in aerobics classes, coming for meetings or workshops or conferences. Anytime students see their family um, involved in the school and kind of this myriad of, of ways um, that students here see their families and community members engage, that's empowering to the students. It uh, helps the students to feel that um, their place here at the school is being supported on many different levels. And so we also like to think of um, parental and community engagement to kind of menu. There's a wide range of opportunities and ways in which parents and community members can participate here. And you're here, and just in the time that I've been in this office, I've seen you in lunching, you've been back here with parents, speaking with them, you've been, you, you kind of, there's a free flow, I feel, of interaction between you and TSEP office. What do you gain from having TSEP here yourself as a principal? Uh, and what do you think perhaps some of your teachers might gain as well? Like what is, what, what's the benefit in having parents here? Uh -huh. So I, I think having parents um, continue in the building doing productive things is very important as one of the founding members of uh, educators as a, of the school as well as the organization. Um, I think the, the vision for having this was knowing how important and how educators forever talk about parental involvement, um, parental needs, need for there to be a triangulated um, support system for students between parents, teachers, and students. And that if, that if we really want that, we really have to dig in and do that piece of work. However, what we know is that schools don't get funding mm -hmm. to do um, work with parents. We get funding to do work with students. Yeah. As a result, um, a small group of people came together with the idea to figure out how we could do this work and somehow collaborate and coordinate the, the opportunities for really rooting this in the life of the school. Perfect. 
Well, I, we're, I'm sure we're going to come back with questions for you once again later. And but for now, we're going to move just right sure. on, on to thank you very much to the director of TSEP, uh, Maria Velasquez. And we're so happy to have you here with us as well. Now, we're going to begin with a question for you. And then, as you know, T what TSEP does is, I think, quite complex in some ways and unique. And so then we're going to, while you're speaking, I'm going to switch over to a PowerPoint presentation slide that hopefully, I think, mirrors a little bit of what's going on here. Okay. So thank you and welcome. Now, you've been here, you've been at TSEP uh, for 11 years, is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wow. So just, just describe for me, like, just think about it. What do you seek to accomplish here through TSEP? What is, when you come in each day and, and you have parents here working with you, what, why is it important to have this here in the community? It's important for the community families to have a space where they could come and feel respected and um, accepted. Mm -hmm. And we have created that space where it's very open and people feel very confident about expressing their opinions mm -hmm. and participate in any way they want and, um, and prefer. So it's, it's a space where they little by little start uh, finding their passion, mm -hmm. their passion about helping others also in the same process of building and uh, increasing their confidence, increasing their awareness. Um, many of our programs, it's a mission and volunteer driven organization. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that people from the community come and participate in different programs, but those programs uh, are facilitated by the same community members that started participating and they have increased their capacity now to facilitate a program or to be an instructor or a teacher. Um, little by little, families, because of that space, they we call it that they become part of the discovery zone. It's, it's a discovery where uh, people from the community start having conversations on the issues that we have as a community. And they get to know that others as well have the same questions and the same concerns and together they have those conversations. So we learn from each other about the, and we feel very confident about expressing ourselves and our opinions concerning the issues. And little by little, our awareness of the issues and where it comes from, um, we start to understand where the, uh, how the systems of oppression, uh, all of that affects our daily life. Um, and little by little, community becomes, um, empowered and they decide what kind of actions they want to take so uh, to make changes for things that they see that are not justice um, so that's after that um, through this discovery and trying to find their passion increasing their confidence in their awareness they become the decision makers of the organization um, and of their community they drive the activities they drive the programs they drive the actions and they start participating also in different community meetings from other representatives from other organizations. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, they also bring resources. Mm -hmm. So it's very interesting in how we have seen um, parents eight, 10 years ago, how they started participating and, not, and now it, they, they're so active in the community and, and really uh, have found their passion to do something about the issues they're facing. So, so looking at the, looking at the sort of flow chart, it, it really kind of illuminates what you're talking about in the way of here's here are the community members enter to what kind what you notice when for parents that are involved as they transform or or they sort of start to change over time and how they are. Perhaps you have an example of a parent that you've worked with. Yes, we know of a parent. We started Spanish literacy classes three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And this is a parent that started with the GED class three years ago. And now she passed the exam. So now she has her GED certificate and she's mm -hmm. so happy. And while knowing her and it gave her a chance to know her uh, and for her to know us as well. And we, we acknowledge that she's a, a person that um, that has a lot of talent and she likes people and she's so welcoming and we said you know having those conversations with the core group of leaders we decided you know why don't we ask her to see if she would like to do spanish literacy I, we think she would be a wonderful person to do that 
And that's what we did. We asked her and said, Maria, would you like to give up Spanish literacy classes? And she goes, yes. And we go, wow, that's wonderful, Maria, because we have six people that, you know, have come for the past month asking for a Spanish literacy class. Mm -hmm. So that's how many of the programs start. They start because people come and say, we, we want this, we need this, we want to be able to help our children with their homework, and I don't know how to read and write. Mm -hmm. And then we have this person that she's an ideal person, she loves people, she has a talent, and we just make that connection and the Spanish literacy happened. Wow. Um, and people are so happy. Mm -hmm. Just yesterday she said, Maria, I didn't know I had this talent. Mm -hmm. And she so her, her family, her, she has two daughters and they go, oh, mommy, we feel so proud of you. A lot of encouragement, a lot of, um, um, a lot of collective working and conversations. Mm -hmm. So people feel confident in doing these things. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the confidence comes when they're, they're facilitating the class. They don't know that they have it mm -hmm. until they do it. They acknowledge, oh, I could do it. I didn't know I could do it. So, uh -huh. in some of your, some of your conversations mm -hmm. turn to collective action. And uh, or partnerships even with other organizations. Can you talk a little bit about when that happens or what that looks like? Yeah, we're part of the community school campaign. Mm -hmm. And um, every year we need to advocate to make sure that that funding doesn't stop. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the actions as a community that we take with our community and with other community organizations to make sure that we go to Springfield, we talk to our legislators and make sure that they advocate for that funding to continue. Also, uh, a few months ago, there was the risk of, um, because right now the state is going through a lot of cutting funds for some of the areas. And one of the things that we thought maybe that they were going to talk about or will cut funding on is on health insurance for undocumented children. Mm -hmm. So um, what we did, we organized and we partnered with different organizations to make sure that that would not happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, especially with the children. I mean, many of the families here, they rely on having that insurance and, uh, and, and they didn't cut any funding. So we're happy that we did that action mm -hmm. and we actually went to talk to our legislators to make sure that that happened. Wow. And just finally, I've been here a few times. I've been able to see some of the interactions between you all and there is a, a wonderful sense of sort of trust here and a feeling of like a safe space. And I'm just curious what you as the director of this program might do to help create that for, create that sense here. It's interesting um, just by meeting where people are at mm -hmm. and acknowledging their experience and uh, their talents and their passion. Mm -hmm. And it, it starts from there. Mm -hmm. Because when uh, we feel valued, when the parents feel valued, on their experiences that they bring, um, I think that's when everything starts happening. They they are able to express. They want to help out because they feel valued. That it's very what they bring is very important to everybody. Thank you so much, Maria. Mm -hmm. um, now we are going to move and have and hear from our two Tisa parents. We are so lucky to have you here today to join us. Both of these parents have been longtime members of TSEP and both have children attending Tilpichkali School. They are here to share their experiences and although they can understand a great deal of English, they feel most comfortable communicating in Spanish. And so that's why you'll see they're wearing the headset so we, they can hear our translation. And in, and in addition to that, we have both Maria and Tamara here to help us with translation. And so um, once again, thank you both Esperanza and Jacqueline for being here. Um, okay, I'm going to say the questions in English, and I'm sure you'll hear them in Spanish um, from our translator. So let's begin with with you, Jacqueline. Uh, y, y, how are you connected to Telpuchkali School? So just let us know about the kids attending your kids. How many kids you have attending here? How old? What grades they're in? Um. Estoy conectada con la escuela Tepochcali porque tengo dos hijos estudiando aquí. Este, las edades de ellos son de 14 y 13 años y están en los grados 7 y 8. 
I'm con connected to Del Pochcali School because I have two children here, mm -hmm. one in the seventh grade and one in eighth grade, and they're 13 and 14 years old. And how long have you been coming to TISA? Uh, diez años. Diez años. Okay. Ten years. And just tell me a little bit, just tell a little bit about kind of what made you come to TISA. Cuando tenía mis dos niños pequeños, uh -huh. este, estaba en una lavandería uh -huh. y una señora me preguntó si estaba participando en algún programa con los niños. Uh -huh. Entonces ella me comentó que aquí en la escuela Teposcali había programas uh -huh. y entonces yo empecé a participar en los programas que tenían en ese tiempo. Este, estuve participando unos días en la clase de alfabetización, pero me di cuenta de que ahí, ahí me di cuenta yo que yo podía ofrecer también un servicio para la comunidad, la organización. Um, ten years ago, I had two of my younger children with me, and I went to the laundromat, and one of the parents there mentioned uh, about the programs at Del Pochcali. And so I went to Del Porchcali and found out that they had Spanish literacy class. So I started to participate in Spanish literacy class. But after a few days, um, I recognized that there was something else that I wanted to do and that I, want, I could contribute to my community. And what is your role here now? What do you do now? What is, uh, how have things changed? Hmm? Um, Ahora, este, mi rol en la organización, uh -huh. este, estoy dando clases de computación. Uh -huh. Este, es algo de lo que yo me di cuenta, este, que en la comunidad hay una gran necesidad de, esa, de esas clases. Y yo fui a capacitarme a otra a organización que da esos servicios, pero siempre con el compromiso de regresar a mi comunidad y ofrecer esas clases. Ahora soy instructora de computación, pero también me encargo en la organización uh, de ayudar uh, con, um, uh, con mis compañeras a uh, coordinar los programas, que todo esté bien, que esté seguro, que tengamos espacios, talleres. Now my role, um, when I started here and I acknowledged that there was something else that I wanted to do. I went to another organization and increased my capacity in computers. And with the intention of coming back to my community and teaching other adults computers, computer skills. Um, now I'm the computer instructor and I also coordinate the programs of Del Pochcali and TSEP. And I coordinate the space and make sure that we have those workshops and those resources to connect those families. And and I'm curious, can you describe, you've done action here, collective action and advocacy at TSEP. Can you tell me how it feels to do collective action and advocacy and maybe give an example? Uh, me siento muy confortable porque mis opiniones son tomadas en cuenta y respetadas. Este, um, yo estuve participando este, colaborativamente con uh, un grupo de jóvenes y padres y niños. Eh, había un edificio muy viejo <ríe> que queríamos que, la, que CPS quitara. Uh -huh. este, y nos unimos, nos unimos y los padres y los niños este, pusimos nuestras manos uh, con pintura Alrededor del edificio hicimos dibujos, mm -hmm. este, los jóvenes hicieron murales mm -hmm. grandes y invitamos a los medios de comunicación. Mm -hmm. Entonces, a, a los pocos días ese edificio se derrumbó porque queríamos que uh, vieran la, la, lo que era ese edificio, mucho riesgo para los niños y para la comunidad muy peligroso. Entonces sí funcionó porque a los pocos días ese edificio fue derrumbado. 
Um, I remember a few years ago, um, first of all, I feel very comfortable and I feel that my opinions are respected and, and people hear my opinions. And um, I remember a few years ago, the youth and parents and children, we organized ourselves in our community uh, because we wanted a building to de be demolished. And um, we got people together and we put our hands with paint around the building. And some of the youth also did some murals around the building. And we got that building demolished. We invited uh, the social, social media and the news came and they did a story. And we actually wanted that building demolished because it, it's, it was a da very dangerous mm -hmm. uh, for our community. And, and, and we got that demolished a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And finally, just one last question. What is it that you, what does TSEC give you? And what in return do you give to TSEC? Desde el primer momento que yo llegué a TSEC, siempre me brindaron apoyo, respeto, y un espacio donde yo podía um, encontrar mis talentos y desarrollarlos. Entonces, ahora yo brindo a TSEC mi tiempo, uh, mis talentos y mi cariño. Since the first time that I, that I came in at the Pochcali and TSEP, I feel that I have been supported and respected. And I have found a space where uh, there is a support to develop my talents mm -hmm. and uh, to develop my leadership as well. And I contribute a lot of time to TSEP, mm -hmm. my talents and my love. Muchísimas gracias, Jacqueline. Gracias. Okay, ahora con Esperanza. Now we're going to go with Esperanza. Uh, muy bien. Thank you, Tamara. Okay. Um, and once again, uh, can you just begin with how are you connected with Pocachcali School? And maybe the, your, the, the your number of kids that attend the school and how old they are and what grade they're in? Estoy conectada con Tepochcali. Tengo yo aquí a mis hijas. Uh -huh. eh, las tengo cerca de mí uh -huh. y este, tengo más comunicación con los maestros. Uh -huh. Y um, tengo una niña de 12 años, va en el 7 y una niña de nueve años va en cuarto y mi niña más pequeña tiene cinco está en el kinder. Okay. Um, I have three children here. I have uh, a connection to the school on the TSEP. My children are close to me, and I feel like I have a closer relationship um, with the teachers here. I have three um, girls who are here. One's in seventh grade, one's in fourth grade, and one is in kindergarten. Thank you. And how long have you been coming? What you said? Tengo nueve años. Oh, nine years. Well, and so, but what made you the first decide to come? And secondly, what made you decide to stay for so long? Eh, yo cuando llegué a TISA entré a manualidades. Uh, ya luego de ahí participé en clases de inglés. But um, is, but is um, it nine years? Uh, uh, so why why continue for so long? What is it? What are you getting here? And um, how my things? Estoy aquí o tengo tanto tiempo aquí porque me gusta este los programas que tiene y me hasta ahorita me gusta trabajar para mi comunidad tenerla informada. Me gusta ayudar a mi gente que esté informado de todo lo que está pasando, los programas que tenemos nosotros aquí, y eso es lo que me hace seguir adelante. Um, I originally started um, coming to TSEP and I was taking arts and craft classes and then I began to take English classes. Um, I've stayed here for quite a long time because I like to help people. I like to make sure that um, I'm helping my community to be informed. Um, and that I have something to offer them and also inform them about the different kind of programming and things that we offer here. 
Have you noticed the change in how you are from the time you started um, in the craft food class until now? Uh, the way you might approach collective action or going to meetings? Eh, sí, en mí ha visto un cambio en que ya no soy la misma de antes. <risa> eh, ya ahora sí, este, uh, cuando tengo alguna duda o quiera do dar mi opinión, la doy sin miedo, porque antes tenía miedo hasta de preguntar. Este, el miedo me, como que me opacaba, o sea, se, se me cerraba todo porque simplemente el miedo, pero ahorita no, ahorita ya soy una mujer ya este sin miedo ya como que tengo más valor para hacer las cosas ya estoy segura de mí misma lo que quiero hacer and for for your children you have three children here what's the benefit so in, in response to that question uh, esperanza shared that she is not the same person that she was when she came and started taking craft classes um, she feels very confident in sharing her ideas and opinions and that before her own fears were uh, uh, oppressing her and, and keeping her from moving forward. But now she feels very confident in those areas and uh, feels, feels very empowered to be able to, to participate, share ideas and opinions. Muy bien, muy bien. Mm -hmm. Muchas gracias. Mm -hmm. Y también, um, how do you think your relationship with T-Step has benefited your children. Um, en los programas que tiene Tisa, eh, ya no tengo que salir a buscar a dónde pueden, o sea, a, o buscar los programas. Yo ya sé a dónde recurrir. Este, en eso se han beneficiado a mis hijas. What? So, so her children have benefited um, by her just becoming more knowledgeable and knowing about the different programs that exist um, both here and in the community. And she doesn't feel like she has to go out trying to search for different programs or um, supports for her children that she can find things here or find other resources here. I'd like to ask you the same question, Jacqueline. Muchas gracias, Esperanza. Um, how do you think your your children have benefited um, from having you here at TISA? Um, uno de los grandes beneficios que tanto mis hijos como yo hemos tenido es que yo pude quitar los miedos y tener más liderazgo. Tengo cuatro hombres, así que quité los miedos de hablarles yo como mujer y ellos como hombres, de puedo tratarlos de una manera diferente. Este, puedo interactuar con ellos. Este, pienso que ellos se han beneficiado de una manera muy grande porque por todos los riesgos que hay en la comunidad donde vivimos, ellos saben que tienen un lugar donde los van a apoyar donde los van a escuchar y donde, donde si piden ayuda los van a ayudar. Entonces, ese es uno de los grandes beneficios que ofrece TISAP. TISAP no es solamente una organización que refiere o que tiene programas, sino que TISAP es como una segunda casa donde puedes venir, pedir ayuda y sentirte eh, bienvenido y ayudado. Bien. Ojalá que lo pueda decir. <risa> Tan bonito. It's been, it's been, it has been a great benefit uh, for my children. Uh, for me personally, it's been a space where I could deal a lot with my fears and take more leadership and have more interaction with my children. Um, to try different approaches on how to communicate also with my children. Uh, there's so many risks in our community and this has been a space of support where I know my children are listened to and they, they could receive the support that they need and they feel the confidence of coming to their second home here at the Bochcali to ask for that kind of support that they need.